Hello everybody, welcome to this special video for the subject foreign language acquisition from Professor Giovanni Peña. I'm very honored and very, very excited to share the plenty of information that we have gathered for all of our listeners. My name is Flor Gonzalez and I will be with you the next three minutes in order to talk about a very exciting journey of linguistics. My partners, Grace Gonzalez, Judel Cajiminian and Francis Fermin. So let's get started. When you hear the word bilingual, many things come to your mind and perhaps some questions as well. For that, the purpose of this video is to enhance what we've learned by giving our listeners the opportunity to read the article named The Relationship Between Applied Linguistics Research and Language for Bilingual Education by the great linguistic David Castle Johnson. So let's go straight to the scenario of the author. And we can definitely say that he pretends with his article to explain the current situation in terms of how restrictive language policies seem to threaten bilingual education throughout the United States of America. There are many other countries, there are many other states, of course, in the United States, let's say, that have the issue of the bilingualism. Now, in order to make this article accurate and make this investigation appropriated with the background of knowledge and of course background of information, what he used, what David Castle used was an ethnographic study. He also used uh, critical theories and he also included the intertextual discourse analysis in order to study the connections between the various layers of policy discourse. But what he insisted the most was the scientific method research. He said there's no way that something can come out without a scientific background. So this is a very relevant fit of this article and this is a relevant uh, information of course and a very background of scientific research is included in over there. In my case as a reader and as part of this um, let's say summary that we have created, I consider that this article is very specific, it's very clear, has a lot of material, and of course it is uh, accurate with the methodology that the author used. The information supports everything that he exposed during the article development and everything that was said over the various topics that the article has is really accurate with the main question that is the base of our summary, of course, in our article. That question is, does applied linguistics research influence the interpretation and appropriation of federal language policy in one United States school district? It's a question to be asked. It's an issue to be asked as well. And we're about to find it out during this video. So stay tuned with the rest of it, and I hope that you keep enjoying it. Thank you. Hello, my name is Grace Gonzalez, and in this section of the research, the author defines bilingual education and talks about the policy of bilingual school of Title III. The Title III production was released for pointing out the definitions of bilingual education. Also, Title III includes the provision that any education program must be based on scientifically-based research. For the author to know how the U.S. Department interprets these policies, he interviewed the director of the State Consolidated Grant Division to know if the, if the educational programs were supported by the Department of Education. And what he found out was that it was up to schools and states to choose particular pedagogical programs for English learners' students. As long as the chosen programs are research-based and if they provide support for the programs in the form of research. So then they are allowed to receive Title III funds. Hello, I'm Judel Kahimian, and from this article, I'll be talking about the SDP, the school district of Philadelphia. According to these article researches, it is a school which supports bilingual educational programs in the USA. 
and it is in charge of the interpretation and appropriation of the Title III and the Title VII. The Title III specifically addresses the English language proficiency for English learners, while Title VII provides professional development for teachers and a way that bilingual education would be focused of grants. The researchers of this article also show that F. Island, a respected bilingual researcher, was recruited by the STP to develop an official language policy for the entire school district. Different researches were carried out to develop this policy, such as the reflexive appropriation of applied linguistics research, applied linguistics research as a support and referencing research on a local language policy. The researchers involved in the different researches of the development of this language policy support that bilingual education program develops and maintains first language literacy as well as literacy. Hello everyone, my name is Francis Furman. Welcome to Apply Linguistic Research as Doctrine. Um, this article is mostly focused on bilingual education, uh, which is considered a way to help students who are learning a second language acquire English. For many years, the problem uh, we have seen with um, bilingual education is that even people who are born in the United States have been placed in bilingual education programs. Um, although some people are native speakers of English, they come in with some gaps um, with their verbal progress due to maybe speaking another language or even hearing another language uh, at home. So something that is missing and that um, what may be expected is an explanation of the application of applied linguistic research in language policy. Um, in large part, uh, there was no implication and thus it existed and continues to exist, uh, but has no real power. Um, its lack of power is due to a change in academic philosophy, um, so to speak, and bilingual education program. Um, so bilingual education is believed to, to be exactly intended for non-native English speakers. Um, so speaking or hearing a non-English language at home may, be, um, may encourage gaps in some English um, speaking students' English language development, but the students um, as English speakers are still not um, good candidates for bilingual education. Um, all right, so in conclusion, um, I'd rather say that this study um, has conveyed um, methodical uh, genre examination of results, um, discussion, uh, conclusion, and educational implications of sections in applied um, linguistic, and has shown also how uh, these sections uh, tend to relate to the um, to one linguistic, and has shown how these sections tend to relate to one another. Uh, so the result sections uh, generally have a highly cyclic structure and not only report a result but also briefly comment on results. So this appears to be a widespread practice um, across disciplines. Uh, so the analysis of the discussion provides full insight into the distinctive um, communicative. So that's why we can say nowadays that applied linguistics um, is something that can um, reach anyone. So, because uh, when both languages are being used, um, that is a fact. That is, um, is one more opportunity that people have in order to communicate in two, in, in, in two languages in the right way. So, thank you so much.